September is Blood Cancer Awareness Month, and currently there is a nationwide blood shortage leaving many in need. The Nicole Cares Foundation is hosting its third annual blood drive, and joining us now with all the details is founder and CEO Nicole C. Pollock. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You know, your story is an interesting one, and I think it's a great message for people to get out there because you got blood cancer, basically, and yes. did not fit the mold of someone who who would typically fall under that category? Not at all. For uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the person that typically presents with this type of disease is male, Caucasian, over the age of 60, overweight, and lives a sedentary lifestyle. None of that fit me because at the time of my diagnosis, I was 46, in great shape, never been overweight, and followed a really good, healthy diet. Oh, wow. wow. That's crazy. And as a result, you needed massive blood transfusions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what I didn't know is that cancer patients, uh, the chemotherapy, it can't decipher between the cancer cells and the good cells, so it kills everything. Mm -hmm. So during my treatment, I required several blood and platelet transfusions that helped save my life. Oh, man. And now you've, you're doing well. Yes, praise God. Yes, and, and you, you learned so much from this that you have made it kind of your mission to make sure that other people can find themselves in the same situation as you now. Absolutely. Uh, my experience, I always say it placed me on my pathway to purpose. And because I needed blood and it was so readily available, that's why I'm so passionate about hosting a yearly blood drive because right now there's a blood shortage, as you said, and I want people to have access to blood products when they need them. Do, explain why there is a blood shortage. Right now there's a blood shortage because of COVID-19, really. Mm. The numbers uh, in the African-American community have always been a little lower, but they're even lower now because of COVID-19. So a lot of people who would typically be uh, consistent blood donors are not going to the blood banks. And we need everyone that's healthy and able to donate to go out and give the gift of life. Are, are people afraid to donate, do you think, because of COVID? Like they're somehow going to get it while they're donating? I think there may be a misconception, but yeah. I want people to know that it's really safe. Uh, we wear a mask. Everything is sanitary and disposable. Mm. So it's really safe. Okay. And, and, and it usually takes about what? 10 minutes is the actual donation time. I think you spend more time filling out the paperwork, right? Yes, the donation time is about 10 minutes. You, fin you spend about 10 to 15 minutes uh, filling out the paperwork. And then after donating blood, they have you stay for about 10 to 15 minutes and have some juice and a cookie just to relax and make sure you're okay before you leave the facility. Okay. And if you donate blood once, you're helping a lot of people potentially, correct? Absolutely. One donation has the potential to save up to three lives. Okay. Amazing. All right. Yes. So as part of your foundation, you're not only just actually asking for the blood. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. Well, the Nicole Cares Foundation is a nonprofit organization. We exist to help people affected by lymphoma and other blood cancers. And we provide services at diagnosis in the midst of treatment and into survivorship. And some of our programs, we have uh, support services and educational programs uh, to help the patient uh, into survivorship. We kind of feel that uh, the medical um, profession, if you will, you know, if you survive, okay, you're fine, get back to your life. Mm -hmm. But as a survivor, and I'm a survivor, I know that my life has forever been changed by the cancer diagnosis. And so that's one of the things we do. And then we also have a really nice program called Hospital TLC or Hope to Hospitals. Pre-COVID, we went into the hospitals we offer prayer and care packages to patients that were receiving inpatient treatment. Okay. Because yeah, I imagine when, the day you get that diagnosis, you feel like your world is over, your life is ending. You, it's probably very scary and you, it's hard to mitigate a path that you're not very familiar with. It is. And so it's really important for people to advocate for themselves. Uh, in the summer of 2016, I received two diagnoses of acid reflux. Mm. Oh. And ultimately, I had blood cancer oh. and had a tumor the size of an eggplant in my chest. So I really promote, through the Nicole Cares Foundation, self-advocacy. You know your body better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. If it does, if you don't feel well, go to the doctor, get a, a, you know, one opinion, second opinion, third, like I did, until you get the correct diagnosis and start to feel better. Oh, my goodness. So what, what made you think that it was still something else? I mean, were you... I mean, did the medication not work? I mean, because yeah, a lot of people are like, okay, well, maybe I just need a little bit more time. Right. So initially, that's what I thought. Uh, the first doctor said it was acid reflux. I got a prescription. I took it for a few weeks. wasn't feeling any better. Okay. My primary doctor said, go see an ENT. So 
They looked in my throat because I, my symptoms kind of progressed from extreme fatigue, mm. night sweats, okay. uh, loss of appetite. Okay. And finally, I was having a sensation like something was constantly stuck in my throat. So okay. I think that's what kind of made the doctors focus really in on my throat. Okay. And it wasn't until I went to see my primary doctor and he did a CT scan that it revealed the mass. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. See, I think people need to hear stories like yeah, that because, you I know, agree. they say advocate for yourself. But what does that mean? How right. does that look? So uh, I'm glad you shared that with people. So now yeah. they have an idea of how they should move forward. One mm -hmm. other question I wanted to ask you, you've yes. mentioned faith quite a bit. Do you have to be of faith to participate in Nicole Cares Foundation? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, that's just my personal walk okay. uh, that I am. You know, sometimes people are afraid, like maybe they mm -hmm. won't take me or they won't help me because I'm not of this particular faith or what have you like that. Oh no, I belong to Faith Movers Church. It's the perfect church for people who uh, are not. That's our motto. Mm -hmm. And so I feel the same for the Nicole Cares Foundation. We welcome any and everyone. Love that. Oh, love it. Thank yes. you so much, Nicole. And congratulations yes. to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so amazing. much. All right. All right. Thank you. For information on the Nicole Cares Foundation, the third annual blood drive, which is coming up this Saturday, you can uh, go to NicoleCares.org, check her out on social media, or if you want to actually go to the blood drive, it's right there in University Park. The information is there on your screen.